We're going to meet Maureen, who's about to inherit an animal with vicious tendencies. Although it's not the only one with dogged persistence. really. Life's so lonely now as far as I'm concerned. I mean, what's the point of anything? The toilet door was locked, so I got in through the window, had to climb over him, and then I checked his pulse and made him decent. And I remembered that in the event of a death at home, one's expected to call one's family doctor. So I did. But I thought to myself, it's a bit late for that, really. And now, you see, he's gone. And he's... He's left me his dog. Herb? Herb, are you in here? I'm only asking because I'm looking for my glasses. And I didn't want you to think I was invading your personal space, as the phrase goes. Of course, the silly thing is, when one loses one's glasses, it's so hard to... Ah! Oh, there you are! Help! Ow, help! I heard your cry of help, oh. our help, and I thought, what a name oh. is for? So I came round. Does it hurt? Yes, Nettie, yes it does. Oh, you poor thing. Oh. You can't go on like this, Maureen. The dog clearly has a taste for blood. You think so? Well, he's ruthless. He's savage. Oh, he's very ugly, too. If I were you, I'd have the beast put down. Put down? Oh, no. No, no, no. I can't do that. He was Gordon's. I can't do that. Please yourself. Nettie, it's not a matter of pleasing myself. There's Gordon's blessed memory to consider. I tell you what I'll do. I shall obtain professional advice. Four. Four? Four minutes. I've been waiting four minutes. Oh, really? You said you'd be only two. Ah, oh, uh, right. I mention this because although you may be a woman of leisure, for me, time is taking. Do you understand? Yes, sorry. One thing that I ought to bring to your notice. I have a dog. Well, surely not. Do you mind dogs? Well, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Especially if they've got teeth and fur. Keep them off the seat, will you? My name is Veronica. Your dog is... Herb. And you are... Maureen. Ah, yes. You rang yesterday. I did. And this dog... <coughs> Dear me, I don't like the sound of that. Oh, his bite, I promise you, is far worse than his bark. This dog, as I was saying, is small but dangerous, and I require your immediate assistance. I think you do, my dear. And you did right to get in touch with me. Now, tell me first, if you will, how did my name come to your attention? It was in the local paper. An appalling rag, in my opinion, though it clearly has its uses. Now, my credentials and press cuttings are laid out on the table here. I'm a trainer of dogs. Yes. I am also a breeder of dogs. Ah. A great Danes, to oh. be precise. How is your dog with other dogs? He rather likes them. It's me he's taken against. Mm. Peter, come and say hello. <gasps> oh, good grief. Bobby, Phyllis. Oh, heavens. They're all very great, great Danes, aren't they? Peter, Bobby, Phyllis, sit. Oh. Good dog. Peter, Bobby, Phyllis, down. Good dogs. They are good dogs. And the reason they're good dogs is that they've been given proper training. Ah. Uh, Peter, Bobby, Phyllis, go. Now then, let us get down to business. How old is your dog, my dear? Well, I'm not sure. Let's say he's middle-aged. Hmm. 
What do you notice about his face? Well, it's not handsome as such. What else? <laughs> it's staring back at me. Yes, exactly. And the ears? They're sitting up straight. The tail? Up aloft. Legs? Planted wide apart. <laughs> Teeth bared. These are all signs, my dear, that Herb is by nature an assertive dog who is inclined to fight for his interests with some determination. Yes, I'd agree with that. Now, in order to make myself known to your dog, therefore, mm -hmm. I approach with caution, but at the same time, without any display of fear. For dogs, you know, are very good at reading body language. Now, you'll see that I have my fingers clenched. Ready to biff him. No, my dear, so that I can offer him the chance to smell my hand ah. without risking the loss of my fingers. Now, I bend down slightly towards him, but I keep my face out of his range. There. Hello, Herb. <coughs> Does he have any physical ailments? Not that I know of. I've noticed that his teeth are in good shape. How many times has he bitten you? A seven. Seven? Seven times in seven weeks, in seven different places. On what occasions does he bite you? When he feels like it, really. Well, do you tease or mistreat him? Do you do anything that he might regard as annoying? Well, I live in the same house. Herb, oh, be quiet. Does he know the basic commands? Does he sit, come, stay? Oh, I, I, I don't think so. Herb, sit. No, I don't think so either. Does he walk nicely on the lead? Hardly. He pulls ahead as if he's late for something, and I run along behind. You run? Yes. Well, if you'll forgive me, my dear, you're not exactly built for speed. I walk quite fast, then. Uh, you walk quite fast. Very well. Now, it seems to me, my dear, that your dog is not only aggressive, but entirely untrained also, and it is this lack of discipline which has encouraged his violent outbreaks. I suggest a block booking of five sessions at a 10% discount, after which I trust your dog will have reached a satisfactory standard of behaviour. Now, this brochure oh. outlines the terms. Thank you. Uh, you say your dog, but I feel it's only right to point out to you that Herb isn't my dog at all. Oh? Whose dog is he? My husband's. Well, then your husband, I think, should have come here with you. Well, I'm afraid he can't do that. Gordon passed away. He did what? He passed away seven weeks ago. He died? Yes. Well, then say it. Gordon died. Gordon... Yes, dear? He died. My husband, likewise, in the middle of the night. What, last night? Oh, no, no. In 1992, on February the 29th, the leap day, you know. I remember his death every four years. My sister... Has she died also? Oh, no. My sister, who resides in Dagenham... Dagenham? ...advises me there are many, many stages in the grieving process. I very much doubt it. I must be at the sad stage at the moment. You were at the stage, my dear, when you should be saying to yourself, enough is enough. Erase unhappy thoughts. Put away the widow's weeds. Well, I'm not weepy as such. I should have not. In fact... I haven't had a good cry since he died. But I think about him constantly. Oh, unwise, my dear. You have enough to be getting on with as it is. <coughs> Did Herb bite you at all before your husband died? Never. He ignored me, really. Well, did he bite your husband? Good heavens, no. Well, a love bite every so often, perhaps. <sighs> He is, if you'll forgive me for saying so. A very strange-looking creature. Uh, do you know his origins? My husband said he found him in the park, behind the tennis courts. Ah. Oh. But I'm not orientated towards dogs myself. In other circumstances, I would have taken him to the authorities and told them I couldn't cope. But he was my husband's, you see. Yes. Herb still remembers him, of course. Waits for him to come home. Well, so do I, in point of fact. I'm sorry. Maureen, my dear, you must cast off this pall of gloom and self-pity. You really must. Your husband lived, and now he's dead. Onward, therefore. Conquer your grief. I did. How can you control your dog if you cannot control yourself? 
I thought I'd pop round. Sit. And find out how you got on. Sit. Thank you. With the dog trainer. So, how did you get on? Very well, really. Sit. She's a bit bossy, but that goes with the job, I suppose. And she's a bit rude, but I'm sure she doesn't mean to be. Sit. Oh, does that sound strong and forceful? No. It's my homework, you see. Saying, sit. How annoying. You say it better than me. Don't you have to practice with a horrendous hound? Ideally, yes. But he's upstairs. I mean, I can't get him to sit when he's asleep. Sit! 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 You see, my dear, a dog is not simply a companion animal. He's a hunter, part of a pack. Now, to Herb, you're simply another dog. A rather large one. Oh. You and he constitute the pack. And he's the leader? At present, Maureen, my dear, he is. And talking of being a large dog, do you try to watch your weight at all? My weight? Oh, yes, I, I watch it very closely. And every day, it seems to me, there's more to watch than there was before. I've put on nearly a stone since Gordon passed away. Since he what? Since he died. That's better. Now, it's clear, my dear, that you're eating to comfort yourself. I know. And it's not working. Now, I would heartily recommend that you embark upon a diet. Now, I have a book which you may borrow. I've never needed it myself, of course, since I lead such an active life. I bought it for my husband. I also wonder, however, whether your wardrobe is showing you off to your advantage. Where do you buy your garments? A Jezebel, as a rule. Jezebel? Between the car park and the conveniences. They have a sale on all the year round. I'm not surprised. Now, I think it's time for us to go into the garden. Come along, Herb. This is a choke chain. Ah. A keep still, Herb. And it is invaluable for training. <coughs> heel, Herb. Heel. When I'm trying to be firm with him, I call him Herbert. Heel, Herbert. But it never works. Herbie I'm holding in reserve, in case I ever like him. He was named after Herb Albert. Who? You know, him and his Tijuana brass. A Spanish flea? What, my dear? Tijuana taxi. Da 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 etc. The Lonely Bull. Brackets El Soro Toro. Mr. Alpert was very popular with my husband. Oh, I see. Now, my dear, here is the choke chain. Thank you. Do you feel confident? Do you feel self-assured? No. Of course you don't. You're dealing with a dog that has bitten you seven times. Nine, at the last count. But you must display confidence, nonetheless. So stand up straight. This is as straight as it gets. Calm, firm, in control. That's what it's all about. Show your authority. A herb, in my view, is like many of the young people that I have the misfortune to encounter these days. The school children, for instance, who push their way onto buses, shouting vulgarities, dropping their litter, spitting, smoking. They've no discipline, you see. That's right, they don't. They've no respect. Their tails are up. Of course, it's the same in all walks of life. Consideration for others is an outmoded notion. People have no time. They want everything now. Always in a hurry. Instant gratification. Road rage. Self-obsession. Hit and run. Appalling. So, when you're ready, my dear, just start walking and keep him nice and close. Very well. That's splendid. Excellent. Oh, he is nice and close. Yes. Jolly good show. Actually, he feels a little too nice and close. <laughs> Herbert? <laughs> I have never, ever, in all my considerable years of working with dogs, seen such a display of unprovoked aggression and unwarranted violence. <sighs> I think the bleeding stopped, my dear. Yes. How does it feel? Painful. I'm not surprised. Now, what happens when we fall off a bicycle? We hurt ourselves. Yes, my dear, we do. And then we clamber on again straight away. So, back to the dog. It's a funny thing, but every time you use this cab, you're wearing another bandage. 
Yes. Here, give it a month and you can pass as the mummy. <laughs> Get into a lot of fights, do you? Only with the dog. Oh, now you tell me. It's all right. He and I are receiving specialist advice. Oh, well, if you want my specialist advice, once bitten, the dog dies. Veronica? Yes, my dear? Are we making any progress? Progress, my dear? I should very much hope so. I trust you're not beginning to be pessimistic. Defeatism never achieved anything, you know. We must be resolute. We must be strong. Head up, shoulders back. What are you? Remind me. You are the leader of the pack. Oh, yes. Say it. Say it to your dog. Herb, I am the leader of the pack. Good. Now, my dear, tell him to sit. Herb, sit. Splendid. Marvellous. But he didn't. Uh, sadly, that is true, my dear. But you said it awfully well. Uh, by the way, my dear, are you comfortable in those shoes? Heavens, no. With my feet, I'm not comfortable in any shoes. Little and Scots, my dear, near the station. Try there. Oh, look. Herb got bored and sat down. Never mind his motivation, my dear. You must give him positive reinforcement. Praise him, praise him. Good dog. Now tell him to stay. Stay. And begin walking away from him towards the garden. Yeah. Well done, both of you. The final command will become... Now, you can stop there, my dear. Otherwise, you might end up in the fish pond. Say the word. Come. Try again. Come. One more time. Come. He's coming. <laughs> Head up. Shoulders back. Chest out. Where is the foul fiend? He's in the garden, I think, Nettie. Mm. Calm, firm, in control. I am the leader of the pack. I am top dog. Ask me what I am. What are you? I am the leader of the pack. I am top dog. Head up, shoulders back. He's not, you know. Not what? In the garden. <gasps> God! Hello, Hello Herb. <laughs> What I was saying just now about me being top dog, that was just a little joke, Herbie. <laughs> so, my dear, are things improved between you and Herb? No, not a bit. Oh, disappointing. But I'm becoming very proficient with surgical dressings. <laughs> well, today, my dear, you will, I promise, be spared further injury. We'll remove Herb's bite and his bark with the aid of... A muzzle. A muzzle? Yes, that's the answer. Why didn't I think of that before? It will have to come off from time to time, of course, unless he's to be nourished intravenously. No, no, my dear. You misunderstand. The muzzle cannot be worn for protracted periods. Oh. It's a short-term measure only to help us with the training process. Keep still, Herbert. Oh, there. Now, my dear, you will give him the basic commands. Remember, stand up tall, chest out. Uh, which reminds me, how have you got on with the diet book I lent you? Very well, thank you. A good read. But have you managed, I wonder, to lose any weight? None at all, unless it was by losing blood. Recently, Herb's taken to biting me in the night. In the night? I said to him this morning, who do you think you are, a mosquito? Uh, tell me, when he's not biting you, where does he sleep, my dear? On the bed, of course. Whose bed? Our bed. Yours and Herb's? Mine and Gordon's. My dear, it cannot be Gordon's bed. Gordon is dead. Yes, he is. My bed. Right. Herb ought to sleep in his own basket. He doesn't possess a basket. But he must, my dear, he must. Every dog should know his place. And you, my dear, should buy a new bed. A new bed? I did, after my husband died. Clean break. New start. Fresh, pleasant, optimistic thoughts. Do you still have Gordon's things? Oh, yes, I've kept the lot. Well, if I may say so, my dear, that was unwise. You are looking to the past. But the past is gone and can never be reclaimed. 
When my husband died, I took every one of his possessions, his clothes, his cello, his evil-smelling pipes, his photographic albums. I took them all into the garden, stacked them in a heap, and burnt them. I felt so much better afterwards. Oh, I see. Shall I tell Herb to sit? Please. Sit. Sit. Oh, sit, you miserable nut. Sit, 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 sit. Oh, I give up. I said I give up. Yes, my dear. You should be telling me courage, be strong, and so on. Yes, my dear. Courage, be strong. Oh, I borrowed some from Nettie next door, but it rained again. Herb will be very cross when he finds out that his beloved Gordon's possessions have all gone up in smoke. So will Gordon. I shall have to sit him down, Herb, I mean. I shall sit him down, well, I'll try at least. Sit, I'll say, and I'll explain it all to him very patiently. I'll tell him it's for the best once the stuff's burnt. I'm sure I'll feel so much better. Ten deep incisions, lacerations round the face. Appalling! Did you take yourself to accident and emergency? No. Very wise. From my experience, you'd still be waiting. <coughs> I'm truly sorry about everything, my dear. Oh, so am I. But with your help, I'll fight on. Do or die, remember the Alamo. I remember the Alamo, my dear. They not only did, they died. Well, we have this one final lesson anyway. No, my dear, I don't think so. Oh, right. You're suggesting another session or two? No, Maureen. What I meant was, the final lesson was last week. Was it? There's nothing more that can be done. Oh, I see. The fault, I am confident, isn't mine. Certainly not. And you, my dear, have tried your best. Well, I hope so. But Herb has proved himself to be beyond our influence. Despite my eagerness to recognise the best in everybody, and particularly in dogs, I am obliged to accuse him of being a thorough reprobate with a belligerent, if not sadistic, streak and a determined resistance to authority. I have written you a cheque, my dear, by way of a full refund of your money. Heavens, no! You mustn't do that. It hasn't all been failure. Believe me, it has. But I've enjoyed my little visits here, the chats and so on. Ah, well, yes. I've enjoyed them too. And you've offered such helpful advice. Not just about Herb, I mean, but how to deal with Gordon as well. I got rid of the old bed, by the way, and I've set fire to his worldly goods. Have you, my dear? Well done. It was because I burnt them that Herb attacked me. I think not, my dear. The reason he attacked you is because he is mentally and emotionally unbalanced. But it was as soon as I confessed to him what I'd done that he sprang on me. Dogs, my dear, understand a few basic commands. They also recognise their own name and the word walk is. But I can assure you, my dear, that your communication to him was not understood. Now, here is the cheque. And I insist that you take it. You came to me in all good faith, and you have not received satisfaction. Therefore, you must be reimbursed. Well, thank you. I'm not a perfect person. I have my faults and deficiencies, I'm sure. But I am not a charlatan. In all my dealings, I strive to be honest and truthful and honourable. Forty years ago, such qualities were generally expected in one, but now I find my behaviour is regarded as a curiosity, as if I belong to another rather quaint backward planet. I know exactly what you mean. When I die, my dear, I shan't much mind it, as long as I know that the dogs are taken care of. I've already seen enough, heard enough, quite enough. Everything is too fast, too loud. Everything's superficial, except the dirt. Everything's smelly. Everything's worse. One thing I've noticed is how, how much chewing gum there is on the pavement. Yes, you're right. And there's such a lot of cyclists on the pavement, too. And they stop at nothing. True. And so many 
beggars and buskers and people with medieval faces who are no friends of hygiene or clean linen. Yes. So many thugs, so many barbarians, mm. and never, never any policemen about. Unless they're in their cars going at a hundred miles an hour. And the state of the underground, of course, is appalling. Appalling? Bodies on the line? Trains stuck for hours between stations. And then there's a junk mail, of course. Oh, heavens. And I no longer read the newspapers because they're full of ungrammatical columnists <laughs> telling us about the banalities they got up to the day before. And as for television... Television! Oh, I'd never watch it now. There's simply nothing on. So, Veronica, what am I to do? What is any of us to do? How can one halt the fearful decline? I meant about Herb. The thug, by nature, is immune to reason. One tries to coax him towards a better way, but he rewards one's efforts with even greater aggression, even wilder acts of violence. The thug, intrinsically, is beyond redemption. Is Herb a sort of thug? Yes, my dear, I rather fear he is. So what is to become of him? He must be removed from here. Taken to a veterinary surgery, and there he must be put down. I was shocked, still am, to the core. I had never anticipated that a dog management course would end with a sentence of death. He's lying here, at my feet. He's been lying here the whole evening. And the strange thing is, he hasn't bitten me once. Maureen, Veronica speaking. Oh, uh, oh hello, Veronica. Well, my dear? Uh, you said I could mull it over. I said you were to think about what I had recommended and reach a proper and satisfactory decision. And I urge you to do so for your own safety and the sake of the community at large. Well, my dear? He knows what's happening, Veronica. Nonsense. He knows his life is on a knife edge. Really, my dear. Now, I will ask you again. Have you reached a proper and satisfactory decision? Veronica! Good evening! Uh, good evening. Uh, do sit down. Uh, did I know you were visiting? Uh, you did not, though you might have expected it, for you've been putting me off and putting me off, so that at last I thought, if the mountain, no offence intended, won't come to Mohammed. Yes, uh, and no offence taken, I assure you. The truth is, Maureen, you have allowed the situation to fester for two weeks now. I've been assessing the pros and cons. No, my dear, you have been procrastinating. But now the time has come for firm and decisive action. Oh, there he is. See that? Wagging his tail at you and everything. He, he, he's a changed animal. He's a disturbed animal and he must be put out of his misery. But he hasn't bitten me once since you suggested the vet. Then you are fortunate, my dear. But do not persuade yourself that he's reformed. He wants to be forgiven. He wants a second chance. My dear, he was allowed a second chance and a third and a fourth. And now, Maureen, he must be called to account. Death comes to us all, my dear. Place Herbert in the context of eternity. Compare his little life with the endless, rolling, unravelling eons. What difference does a few years make? Well, my dear. You've made a very sensible decision, Maureen. Yes. In fact, as I recall, it's one that I advised several weeks ago. Will you be there at the parting shot? No, Nettie, no, I won't. Oh. Veronica, the dog trainer, she's kindly offered to... I'll simply hand Herb over to her and then go home. Yes, well... It's for the best. She says I can have him back afterwards. Oh, is that necessary? 
Well, I, I'm thinking of burying him in the garden and erecting a headstone on which will be inscribed the words Gordon's best friend. Or I might have him stuffed. Stuffed? Oh. oh. I wish I could have had Gordon back, but it was never presented to me as an option. You wouldn't have wanted him stuffed, I hope. No, no. But if he'd been laid to rest within hailing distance, by the apple tree, for example, that would have been nice. It really would. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Well, of course, if you'd listened to me in the first place, you could have saved yourself some bother. Get him put down, I said. That'll cure him. Anyway, all's well that ends well. Here we are. This is it. Yes. I know this vet. His name's Butcher, as it happens. Oh! I'll be two minutes. Farewell, Fido. I will give you a ring, my dear, as soon as it's over. Thank you. And then I'll come round with the body. Oh, you're very kind. So, if you'd like to hand Herb over... It's all my fault. Nonsense. It is. I failed to be top. My dear, you mustn't distress yourself. The worst of it is, he understands. <laughs> Just look at him. Look at the poor creature. My dear, many dogs display signs of anxiety when they visit the vet. Now, give me Herbert's lead. He's a different animal. Give me his lead. He, he doesn't bite anymore. He's born again. Maureen. Oh, thank you. I think you should go now. Uh, yes. Goodbye, Herb. Oh, I'm sorry, Herb. Five. You took five minutes not to. Back home, is it? Yes, please. So? No, thank you. You what? I'd rather you said nothing if you don't mind. Oh, right. He was Gordon's dog. He was Gordon's dog and I, I've signed his death warrant. It isn't fair on him. It isn't fair. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, take it easy, lady. Oh, poor little Oh, dear. He was a vicious brute. I'd be the first to admit it, but he was Gordon's vicious brute. And Gordon is true as a tiresome man in many ways, but he was my Gordon and I miss him so much. I want him back. I want him back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> May I speak? Your hope. Oh, yes. Cup of tea and a slice of cake and you'll be feeling right as a trivet. Yes. Thank you. Oi, oi, hang on. Here, what about paying me? Gordon's not coming back. He's never coming back. That's the first thing. He's not coming back. And the second thing is, it's not just sad, like I thought it was. It's very, very, very sad. And the third thing is, because it's very, very, very sad... It's all right to weep buckets. 
That's what one does in such adverse circumstances. There's nothing unnatural about it. It's it's the very, very, very sad part of the grieving process. That's all. Go away. I'm grieving. So am I. You haven't paid your fare. He's dead. He's dead. Dead, dead, dead. And I got rid of the bed and burnt his possessions, which was a mistake, I think, despite the fact that Veronica is a woman of great wisdom and experience. And after that, Herb was all that was left to remind me of him. Every bite was a little memento. Oh, Herbie. My dearest Gordon's dearest Herbie. What on earth was I thinking of? Please, Herbie, don't be dead. Oh, God! This is the Fur and Feathers Veterinary Surgery. Unfortunately, there is no one to take your call at the moment. But if you would like oh, to leave your number after the tone, we will make every endeavour to get back to you shortly. Listen! My name's Maureen, and the dog's name is Herb, and if the vet hasn't murdered him already, I forbid him to do so! Good! You haven't gone! You're damn right I haven't! Back to the slaughterhouse! Quick! Okay, all together you owe me... Stay there! Uh, I'll just be... Two minutes. Did you get that message? What message? About Herb the dog. Um, look, I'm sorry. You're sorry? Oh, no. No, I was too late. Too well, the not. thing is, oh, there's been a bit of difficulty this morning. Could you come back tomorrow? Tomorrow? I'm not coming back tomorrow. Where's the vet? Tell him to find an antidote. Tell him to apply heart massage. But, madam, the vet isn't here. He's not here? Why? What's happened? Why? He's slain my dog and now he's fleeing the country. Do be a good girl and sit I down. I demand to see my dog. Maureen, my dear. Dead or alive? He's here, behind the German shepherd. Herbie! Herbie! Listen, my dear, I'm afraid the vet has been delayed. Oh, Herbie, my dearest. He's just phoned in, apparently. He's been stuck on oh. the tube. There was a body on the line. A body on the line? Oh, thank God, thank God. But he won't be long now. Herbie, I'm so glad to see you. I wouldn't get too oh. excited, Maureen. You'll be saying goodbye to him again soon. Oh, well, that I won't. Herbie and I are leaving here together. Oh, no, my dear. Oh, but yes, my dear. I have suffered a sea change, and I'm having him back. For good, give me his leave. No, Veronica. My dear, you are, I know, a woman of great wisdom and experience. And I, for my part, am feeble, foolish and insignificant. But you won't win this one, I assure you. Pardon? I am minded to act in a very forthright fashion. I am minded, indeed, to be top dog. Give me Herbie's leave, please. Oh. You are making a terrible mistake, my dear. So be it. The creature is simply not to be trusted. No matter. He's alive. <sighs> now, Herbie, let me take off your nasty, horrid muzzle. He's dangerous, Maureen. There we are. He is savage. Free at last. He's a psychopath. Oh, my dearest Herbie. For heaven's sake, Maureen. What a ghastly experience you've been through. How can you ever forgive me? Ow! Quite clearly, he can't. You see, I told you. Did he draw blood, my dear? Just a soup song. Naughty Herbie. May I speak? Please. Is this the final trip... Or are we going back to the vets? No, no, we are not going back to the vets. You won't get me to change my mind, Veronica. No, I don't believe I will. I'm fighting my little corner, and Herbie's, and Gordon's. 
Well, as someone who knows dogs, my dear, I can't say that I approve of what you're doing. But as one who knows you, I'm pleased if it will make you happy. Thank you. That's very kind. I hope, my dear, that despite this particular difference of opinion, we can continue our little friendship. Yes. I hope so, too. We see eye to eye on so many things. We do. And it would be a shame to fall out. Will Herb's continued presence be a problem at all? I think it probably will, my dear. I will no doubt look upon him as a deliberate insult to my pride, an affront, a reminder that there is a limit to my influence. <laughs> He will perhaps be very good for me. But he will not, I'm certain, be very good for our friendship. So when you visit me next, my dear, and I hope it will be very soon, leave the dog behind, will you? Uh -huh.